Hi everybody and welcome back to Miss Angler's biology class. I am Miss Angler. In today's video, we're going to do everyone's favorite organelle, the mitochondria, or as it's more affectionately known, the powerhouse of the cell. At the end of this video, you should be able to identify the structures, give me functions, and also be able to draw this in tests and exams. We're also going to look at how to identify mitochondria in micrographs, because I know that's a real challenge for many of us, and often micrographs look nothing like the textbook. Now, if you are new here, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and make sure you're subscribed with your notifications turned on because I post every Tuesday and Thursday. And if you are also new here, don't forget to go check out my cheat sheet study guides, which are available currently for grade 12 and 11. However, if you are watching this video after April 2024, then you should be able to get your hands on my new grade 10 cheat sheet study guide. It is going to make your life so easy, so simple. All the content has been summarized into my very special cheat sheets. So let's dive straight into the content and we're going to look at this diagram here of our mitochondria. Now mitochondria have two membranes. You will notice they have an outer membrane and they have an inner membrane. Now the suggestion in terms of why this happens is actually really important. We need to have two membranes because what we want to do is we want to be able to increase surface area. Now it's not just about increasing the external surface area. Most importantly the inner membrane is what's also going to provide more surface area and it does that by being folded. Now if you have a look at the diagram above you will notice that the inner membrane has these folds and those folds add another level of increased surface area. And why do we increase those surface area? Because we want more reactions to take place. Remember, the function of the mitochondria is to provide energy to the cell so the cell can do its job. Now, we want to do as much of that as possible. We want as many chemical reactions. So we need an increased surface area to do that because those chemical reactions are occurring on these membranes. Now, the folds of the membrane, the inner membrane, are known as the crista or the cristae, depending on whether you're talking about one or many folds. Um, and then the um, mitochondria is filled with a fluid, which we call the matrix. And in this picture here, you can see it is this like bluish like liquid. Now, depending on what grade you're in, um, the next bit is a little bit um, unnecessary if you're in grade 8 and grade 9 watching this video. But if you are in grade 10, there are a couple of extra things that you do need to, to know about mitochondria and what's inside of them. And I'm going to start off with the fact that there are ribosomes inside the mitochondria. Now, just think about how special that is. Ribosomes are organelles that exist in the cell. But this is an organelle with its very own ribosomes. And this probably speaks to the origins of the mitochondria, which I'm not going to get into this video now. The next thing that we need to know is that your mitochondria has its own DNA, which is really, really special because this DNA you inherit from your mom or what we call it maternal. And your maternal mitochondrial DNA is actually how we trace ancestry and how we see um, the links between families and where we descended from. And that is because you only inherit your mom's mitochondrial DNA. You don't get any from your dad. And what's also really interesting about this is mitochondria have to be made from other mitochondria. Which basically means you can't make mitochondria from scratch, right? It's not in your DNA. You actually have to inherit a whole, a whole mitochondria from your mom. And then you just copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste. And every time you do that, you also copy, paste her mitochondrial DNA. Now, I've gone through the overview of what is a mitochondria, but let's also discuss what it does. And um, for many of us, we need to know this very important formula. Now, depending again on what grade you are in and how advanced you are, this um, word equation or this chemical equation might be a little bit more than what you need to know, or, it, or if it's the other way around, 
you are in grade 10 or 11, you need to know more detail. This is the equation that we would use to describe what happens inside the mitochondria. So the mitochondria is going to take glucose and it's going to combine it with oxygen. And that is going to produce a couple of things. One, it's going to produce energy. Um, and that energy is in the form of ATP. Um, if you are in a younger grade, you simply need to know that you're producing energy. But if you're in grade 10 or 11 watching this video, then you definitely need to know what ATP is and what it stands for. If you want more clarity on that, I do go into a video on my cellular respiration video, which I've linked up above now. You also produce carbon dioxide, I'm just going to write here CO2, and you produce water, uh, specifically water vapor, you breathe it out. And those are your byproducts. Now, this is the equation that we would need to know. And again, depending on whether or not you are a little bit more advanced, I would convert some of these now to their chemical equations. So if you're more advanced, you would need to know that glucose is H6, uh, C6H12O6, oxygen is O2, ATP stays as is, carbon dioxide stays as is, and then water vapor is just H2O. For those of you who do chemistry as well, no, you do not need to use a balanced equation in life sciences. Now, as I mentioned earlier, if you want any more information on cellular respiration and how that works, then you should go check out the video I am linking above now, where I talk about cellular respiration, the Krebs cycle, um, uh, oxidative phosphorylation, everything that you need to know, and that's more for a grade 11 level. The next thing I want to do is just clear up some confusion about what to look for when you're trying to identify a mitochondria in a cell. Now, let's look at some micrographs because mitochondria don't look like their illustrations in real life. It's just a model of what they look like. This picture over here that I have is a micrograph of a mitochondria in a cell, and we've zoomed all the way in. And as you can see, it doesn't look like the 3D image we saw now. It's in 2D. So I want you to imagine that we have cut the mitochondria through the middle like that, and we are now removing the top layer and we are now viewing what is inside the mitochondria and that's what you're seeing here. Now, you always know it is a mitochondria because of these very distinct folded lines that sit inside and that is the cristae. You will notice they're really like long and thin and that is the defining characteristic of a mitochondria. Another thing is um, the shape of a mitochondria has this like long rod like shape if I just outline it for you. Now what's also important to know is that they don't all look like this. You see they can also look like this mitograph which you'll notice in this micrograph this um, mitochondria isn't a, a rod shape, it's sort of circular, and that might be because we ended up cutting the mitochondria this way um, instead of through the middle and going longitudinally, um, sorry, latitudinally, we did long, so we did it from the top to the bottom instead of from left to right, so that might be why, but we still have the most important key feature visible, which, as I mentioned earlier, was these cristae, that's what we're looking for when we're looking for this in a diagram. Now, the last thing I want to actually show you is what do mitochondria look like when they're in a tissue, like when they're in and amongst other things. Now, you're probably not sure what we're looking at right now, but this is a piece of muscle. And these long pieces here are muscle fibers. So that is a piece of muscle. And then all of these structures here, all of these are mitochondria. Now, this makes sense because any tissue that needs to do a lot of work has a lot of mitochondria. And that's something, that's a law, that's a rule that I want you to remember, is that if there is a lot of mitochondria, you know that that particular organ, or in this case tissue, has or needs a lot of energy. Now, 
there are many, many, many tissues that need a lot of energy. One is muscles. Two would be your digestive system. And so as you progress through life sciences, you will note um, the kinds of tissues that require more mitochondria than average. Now, as always, I like to wrap up these lessons with a quick terminology recap. Remember, this is really vital for when you're studying because these are the words that are going to get you marks in your explanations. So we started off with looking at the outside and the inside structure of the mitochondria. And we must remember that there are outer and inner membranes. Specifically, the inner membrane is folded to create structures called cristae. And their sole purpose is to increase the surface area so that more chemical reactions can take place and therefore make more energy. We also know that there is a matrix, which is a filling in the mitochondria, and that is where the chemicals we need to do cellular respiration exist. That's where they are. That's the raw materials. Um, it also provides a place where those reactions can take place. We spoke about ATP which is the form of energy that we produce in the mitochondria. And how do we make that energy? We do cellular respiration. Cellular respiration is where mitochondria take glucose and oxygen, um, and they combine it in order to form ATP, carbon dioxide, and water vapor. Now, I just want to preface this last little bit that if you are in high school, you should stop using the definition of it's the powerhouse of the cell. That's really something that you would use in primary or junior school. At this point, if you're in grade 10, 11 and 12, you should be using cellular respiration. Please do not use the powerhouse of the cell. And I also encourage our younger viewers as well in grade eight and nine to already stop using it now and focus on using the word cellular respiration. Now, if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and make sure you're subscribed with your notifications turned on because I post every Tuesday and Thursday. And I will see you all again soon. Bye.